So Jerome Powell said this. Although inflation has been moderating in recent months, the process of getting inflation back down to 2% has a long way to go and is likely to be bumpy. As I mentioned, the latest economic data have come in stronger than expected, which suggests that the ultimate level of interest rates is likely to be, to be higher than previously anticipated. If the totality of the data were to indicate <clears throat> that faster tightening is warranted, we'd be prepared to increase the pace of rate hikes. Restoring price stability will likely require that we maintain a restrictive stance of monetary policy for some time. Then this happened. The FDIC has now put out a release with regard to the now wind down of Silicon Valley Bank. In their news release, Silicon Valley, but the FDIC rather, says that Silicon Valley Bank Santa Clara was closed today by the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation. And then the president said, Americans can rest assured that our banking system is safe. Your deposits are safe. So the question is, what can we expect the Federal Reserve to do at the upcoming FOMC meeting? What's up, you guys? Welcome to the Wall Street Vibe, where we're giving you the vibe of the market. So if you like videos and content just like this, be sure to like and subscribe, share the video out, and make sure that you comment in the comment section your thoughts, okay? So we had a lot of things go on in the last couple of weeks. Um, actually, it's probably been a week, right? So, um, you know, we had bank failures, Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, Silvergate, just some of the top names that were newsworthy, essentially. There were also some regional banks that did go under. And the one question that I have is, what is Jerome Powell going to do at the FOMC meeting? So after he said that the likelihood of interest rates going up as he said that when he testified about two weeks ago then we had these bank collapses and you know obviously with silicon valley bank going down they were the second largest bank to collapse in u.s history now there were a couple of other things that happened okay obviously president biden came out and said we are going to guarantee everyone's money right now the fed had to go and print more money that to me is a little bit alarming seeing how inflation is back on the rise uh gdp and jobs are actually very hot at the moment okay so that means uh we can almost expect inflation to continue to rise okay so in order to bring that down two things either have to happen okay we either have to see people losing jobs or we have to see interest rate hikes now the downside to those interest rate hikes are that it's going to put more pressure on the banks. They're calling this now the financial crisis, right? Obviously, 08 was the housing crisis, the financial crisis. I, I wanted to get your thoughts. I was thinking before this happened, before all of this, all of these events had taken place, before the banks collapsing, before the Fed creating this fund that was going to guarantee all of uh, all of the depositors money. And then before the president saying, oh, you can have faith in the banking system at the next FOMC meeting, which starts on Tuesday of this week um, and ends on Wednesday, we'll kind of have an idea of what's going to happen. Now, uh, I was actually expecting a 50 point rate hike. OK, but I've seen some articles like in Bloomberg saying that um, analysts are kind of expecting a slight rate hike, even though the banks are still under pressure, okay? Now, uh, there is the possibility that they completely pause, you know, rate hikes, at least for the month of March, and that could send the market flying back up just because, you know, no interest rates, right? However, we could see that have a heavier impact going into April because without interest rates, we are unable to bring that inflation back down, um, you know, back below 6%. As we know, that's what it was last, last month, okay? That could have significant repercussions because if the Fed decides to halt uh, raising rates, then Basically, what could happen is we could see inflation get much hotter in the month of March. When it reports in April, it could come out through the roof and that could send the market completely crashing down. So um, 
The question I have for you guys, and I'd like to get your thoughts on this, but let me know down in the comments. Do you think Jerome Powell is going to raise interest rates uh, by 50 basis points, 25 basis points, or do you think he's just going to pause them all together for the month of March? Two, do you have confidence in the banking system given how the fact that all of these executives just took their bonuses and ran as that bank started to collapse. As Silicon Valley Bank started to collapse, every executive took their bonuses, they sold stock, um, because they knew what was coming. They saw the writing on the wall, okay? Um, if you want my answer, I have zero confidence in the banking system. Um, but again, that's just my opinion. So uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. And then what do you think inflation will come at if we don't raise the rates? Do you think that's good for the economy, bad for the economy, given the fact that banks are significantly under pressure? Um, or do you still think that they can somehow manage to wiggle out of this one too? I personally don't think so. I think there's been too many dominoes that have fallen. Obviously, we're starting to see Europe be heavily affected with Credit Suisse. I think that um, if the Fed decides not to raise rates, period, so let's just say they decide to halt completely, I think that is going to have an effect on the U.S. economy in a negative way because if inflation is not controlled by raising rates, then there has to be another way that they are able to slow down the economy. So the only other thing I could think of is going to be they're going to start cutting jobs. We're going to see a significant uh, number of jobs being lost. Um, and then there might be hiring freezes all throughout the, the U.S. And the sad thing here is that some poor decisions that are made by high level executives, people that get paid the big bucks to make these types of difficult decisions, and they end up going wrong. To me, I feel like there should be severe consequences for any executives that think that they shouldn't be held liable for the decisions that they made with other people's money. That's going to do it for this video today, guys. If you like content like this, just be sure to like, subscribe, and share the content out. It's really going to help me out. Again, let me know what you guys think of those three questions that I asked. Um, do you think that they should raise the rates? Do you think they're going to? By how much, if so? Do you have any confidence in the banking system? I don't, as I already told you. But just let me know down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.